This is episode 128 of Zen and the Art of Real Estate Investing with my guest, Zoe Berghoff. Zoe is a visionary in the world of short-term rentals, renowned for her unique approach to Airbnb and unique stays that offer unforgettable experience to her guests, development, glamping, and land hacking, all of these things. I'm excited to talk to you. Zoe, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, no, I'm, I, you you really have taken a unique slant since you started. Do you remember back when the first time you were interested in real estate, not, maybe not even knowing that it was going to become something that you ended up doing full time? Yeah, it's actually a funny story. Um, when I was like 10 years old, we had cabins in northern Michigan and my mom put them. She was on for about Airbnb before the platforms even existed. So yeah. checks used to get mailed in and she had calendars printed out of the dates that were booked <laughs> and whatnot. And I remember at 10 years old being like, guests are coming in. We got to switch cabins today. And it's so funny to see, you know, 20 years later, that's yeah. exactly what I'm doing with my husband and my baby. Yeah. Um, and here we are, it's kind of come full circle to be doing real estate in the same way she was. I'll definitely get back to your journey, but I wanted to get your take on this. A lot of people look at Airbnb since it's the biggest conglomerate of the sites and <laughs> they think negatively of it, but it's really a marketing tool, right? How have you looked yeah. at it as part of your journey as somebody who's hosting and building things specifically to market them through there how do you look at them as a conduit for your business yeah that's a great question um and it's funny because everyone's like oh you do airbnb it's and it's like we actually do short-term rent right. <laughs> right. like, right. yeah um but i totally understand you know airbnb has done a great branding that that's when you think of vacation rentals that's what you're thinking of um we you know whether it's going to be airbnb for the next five years or it's a different channel in 10 years hospitality and vacation rentals have been yeah. around for generations and centuries. So that's not going anywhere. Um, and that's where, you know, you just want to make sure you're taking advantage of all the channels out there. You need a PMS to run your business so you can host a different guest. Right. And also think of that direct booking aspect and, you know, capturing those guests that you are getting on Airbnb. Um, I don't know if Airbnb will be the forever channel for 10 to 15 years to come, but the idea of travel is not going to go anywhere. Why do you think the consumer is so much, I guess, seemingly more interested in short-term rentals? I know why I am, but I want to get your take on, especially with what the, the type mm -hmm. of unique stays that you're providing. What's really yeah. the lure of that against people who used to just stay in hotels, maybe? Great question. <laughs> right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> um, we definitely try to cultivate unique stays. And I think the definition of unique in short-term rentals can be so widely accepted it doesn't have to be a tiny home or a yurt it can also be you know the house is on top of a mountain and not a lot of people get to live like that so i personally believe the short-term rental industry is just going to continue to grow because people want to escape what their everyday life is and for that week-long stay or 48 hours experience almost a different way of life and not to say someone's going to want to live in a year for 365 days, yeah. but for a four day getaway, you know, they get to almost live a completely different life than what they have at home. And that's why I personally believe unique stays are what's growing because you can get a traditional neighborhood home because a lot of people live in homes like that already. Yeah. But um, we try to really think of, okay, how can we make this property completely different than what people get? out of their normal life and why would they pay for it as well yeah and you really capitalized on glamping which to me yeah i didn't understand it at first and then i was like wait i don't i never want to go camping like i'm not yeah. that's not for me glamping i'm like well it seems like i'm going camping but i can get yeah. the sweet yurt with all the amenities in it is that really the lure people kind of feel like hey i'm kind of going off the grid but i still gonna have netflix and it's gonna be yeah. really cool inside yes yeah i think um you know, our ideal guest for the year is not everyone. So that was something I had to learn early on was I kind of thought in the beginning, you know, you don't want to maybe disclose like, oh, the Wi-Fi could get spotty or it's a dirt road to the property. And we were getting people that weren't an ideal fit. Yeah. Like they were leaving reviews where it was like, just so you know, there's no air conditioning. And I was like, you know, obviously there's no air conditioning. Right. But to me, that was obvious. And to a user, it's not always obvious. So as a host, I've actually learned to almost take a step back and put all those, those disclosures up front 
on the platform so that they completely see what the experience is going to entail good and, you know, not so good sometimes. Yeah. And that really helps improve our reviews and overall stay for our guests. But, you know, some of our guests will message me like, you know, I slept outside in the hammock last night and I'm like, you did? (laughs) There's a lot of animals around. Did you know that? But, um, you know, that's the ideal person is they really just want to get away. We've even hosted someone who was a tech guy out of San Francisco. He drove his Tesla up like the dirt in the dirt mountain road. And he was like, I just want to have like a getaway for seven days. But there is that Wi-Fi and that creature comfort and, you know, the bathroom and all of that. Yeah. So that does factor into our price point as well with those creature comforts. So do you not use Instabook? Because I feel like that might help. That could be a yes. real problem. That's a good question. So I actually on the yurt, um, I sometimes go back and forth depending on like, you know, the booking lead time we're getting and kind of like the, the guests coming in. But I actually, um, last summer I turned off instant book on the year because we were just getting people who were like trying to come with, you know, two dogs and yeah. the year is elevated on a deck. So it's like, you have to go down to, you know, it's just, we weren't getting the person who's going to have the best time. So it's actually kind of against the algorithm for me to have instant book off. I know. But I, know. I found an increase in reviews, guest enjoyment, hosting enjoyment as well into who we were hosting. So some unique days, you know, it could be a better fit. If you do have instant book off, um, your response time needs to be like a one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's important. I mean, that's part of the whole thing is how the algorithm works as much as we all mm-hmm. despise every algorithm <laughs> that's ruining our lives. You have to play the algorithm to be successful as a short-term rental host, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And you can, I personally, you know, if you have instant book off, cause it doesn't make sense for you and you find yourself canceling people, you know, you're going to hurt yourself in the super host status route. So, um, if you are going to have instant book off, you want to have everything else really yeah. you know, professional photos, that listing description, amenities, everything. Um, But I'm personally, I've told people like if instant book is what's causing the guests that aren't wanting to stay with you at the end of the day, don't feel like you have to have it on because Airbnb says you do. 